Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> this is the second part of this first topic, which is uh, internet governance. So we have <clears throat> we have talked about the internet <clears throat> uh, to the extent that <clears throat> we can understand the. Uh, um, the overview of the history of the internet and, and the basic characteristics of the internet. And also we uh, see the, we, we, we uh, showed you the uh, commentaries here yeah, by some scholars such as Professor Jonathan Zitrin, who is from Harvard, and then uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, last time I remember he was with uh, MIT and also um, John Palfrey is also a professor in Harvard University. So out of these three, I met these two. I met the first two. I met Jonathan Zitran. I met uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee uh, in Oxford. Yeah, both of them I met there. Um, it was a first-hand experience to hear from these uh, people, uh, those who were very uh, 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 much involved yeah, in the internet development. Um, then, uh, with that, we know how the internet it was, how it was intended to be, how it was uh, meant by the uh, creators or the developers of the architecture behind the internet. Of course, the way we see internet now is very much ubiquitous, very much uh, different. Uh, we have we see everything in the internet. We saw we see the military side of it and the way how it was first developed. We see the governmental side of it, you know, uh, how the internet is being used by the governments in in providing, uh, you know, uh, facilities and 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 services to the citizens. We see how the internet is being used by uh, by military, as I said just now, and how they use it as an intelligence tools as well. We we also see how the internet is being used by by uh, researchers, yeah, by students, by researchers, by professors uh, in exchanging the information and then uh, publications, yeah, and so on. And we also see how the internet is being exploited and used by uh, commercial communities, by business communities uh, in uh, as what we see as uh, e-commerce is, is growing, you know, uh, by the use of the internet. But also we see how the internet is being used by private uh, people, private users, as well as uh, the other side of it, you know, the, cre the, 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 the dark side of the internet usage, like uh, the, use of the internet for uh, uh, um, you know immoral purposes from for non-ethical purposes as well as for illegal purposes so we see how the internet now developed in such a way in fact uh, we can say that it, it develops the way uh, beyond uh, what is expected by everyone even the the creators of this uh, uh, architecture in the first place uh, so there had been attempts by these people one way or the other, from both the I mean, from technical side as well as the non-technical side, from the individuals, from the institutional uh, perspectives, as well as from the uh, governmental organizations, national and international, there have been attempts to ensure to to, to put some um, you know some uh, uh, standards, rules, protocols, you know codes. Um, and laws, regulations, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, maintaining uh, the internet the way they want to be. Yeah. So this takes us to this idea that the internet has now become the subject of uh, governance. Yeah. The subject of governance. This is nonetheless because of the uh, the very influential nature of the internet itself. You know, today you talk about people's life and uh, it is so much uh, integrated in the internet and the inter in, in, uh, internet tools, ICT tools and so on and so forth. We, we don't pass by our life 
a day without actually interacting through the internet and getting some benefits from the internet, isn't it? And in, in the word of uh, one Supreme Court judge in the U.S. from the case of uh, 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 one, uh, I'll, I'll show you the case afterwards, uh, saying that the, the internet, the tools of the ICT, the gadgets have now become like the part of the human anatomy, you know, because we keep on holding our mobiles, we keep on integrating and using the and, and the uh, devices and so on. So it is a non-separable thing from our life. Um, of course, from legal perspective, this uh, bring you know further issues and concerns uh, because it actually influences the way we we interact with people. It influences our communications. It influences what we um, uh, exchange to people, you know, and the way we exchange to people. And therefore comes this issue of internet governance. Um, so here we will talk about this very nature of internet governance. And as you will realize, internet governance is actually wider than just law or uh, cyber law for that matter. We are talking about many or uh, multiple efforts you know multiple efforts used by multiple parties be it individual and organizational be it commercial and non-commercial be it governmental and private you know in putting up ways in order to uh, form or reform the internet so internet governance yeah governance is not the same with government because this is also some misconception people have people would have when we talk about internet governance. Uh, do you see now the slide moving? The second slide? Yes, bro. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So internet governance is not only about what the government is doing with the internet. So these are two different things, okay? Government doing with the internet in many ways, of course, the way, of, uh, the, way the government has been doing. But when we talk about internet governance, it is beyond, it is not only the, what the government is doing, but also what other people are doing to the internet, yeah? So internet governance is not predominantly a government business. Yeah? It is actually everyone's business. It is about how to govern the state of affairs of an institution or an entity. So, so when we talk about internet governance, it is about how every stakeholder, uh, we are talking about many stakeholders here, uh, should play their role to shape the internet the way it should be, okay? Because now we see internet is actually a global entity and everyone who lives in this uh, world has a common interest to the internet, yeah, to the internet. So it is of ultimate need and necessity for us to actually put our hands together, all these multi-stakeholders and yeah, the different stakeholders to come up with their own way and role to play um, in, in their own capacity and capability uh, to, to, to create the, sh the, the shape of the internet the way it should be. And uh, what is the way it should be? We will talk about this later. We, we will see here. And it is also defined in uh, by the World Summit on the Information Society or WSIS. This is um, this is a global forum actually uh, uh, initiated by the United Nations uh, by the United Nations back in early 2000, 2003 to be precise, uh, which involved all the parties uh, in the world globally including the governments and individuals, yeah? So they had this World Summit on Information Society two times, the WSIS 2003 and 2005, yeah? So in 2003, the first time they actually came up with this declaration and come up with these documents, yeah? Uh, in which they define internet governance as a development, the development and application by governments first, yeah, the governments, and then private sectors and civil society in their respective roles of shared principles yeah in their respective roles means the role of each of these will be different what the government is doing will be different what private sector is doing is different what civil society doing would be different yeah but it is about doing or playing their respective role yeah to develop the in the the internet yeah to develop uh the shared principles this is the, the 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 basis of it the shared principles 
norms, rules, decision-making procedures, and programs that shape the evolution and the use of the internet. So with this WSIS, actually they are looking at having a unified and common values, you know, uh, as to how the internet should be, yeah? So actually it comes up with the internet, uh, what, what we want the internet to be. This is from the World Summit on Internet uh, and Inter Information Society. So in order to do that, the different parties will be allowed or will, will have room to contribute, yeah, the way they uh, according according to their role. <clears throat> um, okay, I, I'll skip this because this is part of uh, the internet history. So now the question uh, of who runs the internet. Um, <clears throat> this this understanding is important because uh, people been talking about putting law on the internet and arguing that we can regulate everything that we want to regulate in the internet. But if you have a misunderstanding of how internet works, then uh, at, at, you know, at best is that you may have a law which looks so beautiful, but then at the end, it may not really um, do good to, to the internet itself. Yeah? So uh, because it, it is just doesn't jive with the concept of the internet itself. So it is very important for us learning cyber law, learning, you know, uh, all these uh, legal rules about the internet, knowing that what internet is, knowing what internet is and how it works and who runs the, 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 the state of the affairs of the internet. Only then we will be able to realize, you know, whatever we put forward, then we know how much it can do. You, know, as you, are talk, you want to talk about putting the law on in offensive content in the internet in Malaysia, then you realize that you, your law can only do as much as what it is, you know, as a law of a country. But then in, uh, you cannot uh, easily stop the content coming from other countries, for example. So, so that is the given fact that we have uh, in order to, to, to have a better, uh, you know, uh, understanding of, of uh, having a cyber law. So who runs? This is an important question. Who runs the Internet? The internet itself is globally a globally distributed contributed uh, computer network. Yeah, we mentioned this one earlier. Uh, comprised of many voluntarily interconnected autonomous networks. This is interesting. Yeah, those people who are interconnecting to the internet, who join the internet, they, in most cases, they are actually voluntarily, yeah, voluntarily connecting. Yeah, nobody actually tells you that you must connect with me, you must connect with me, or I will have to connect with the other person. No, it is such an uh, voluntariness. This is how it all started. I want to connect with you so as I will get more benefit. I will be able to share with you one university with the other university, then other university, and so on, and university outside the country. How that's how it started, and uh, uh, all these uh, computers are uh, being. Uh, the first, the, the, the initially they actually get connected in such a way, and then inter interesting, it says that it is an interconnected autonomous networks. So re the rest of the thing is that uh, these computers are autonomously networking to each other. The moment I let's say the moment I decide I will connect my computer to the internet, actually what happens is my computer is getting interconnected to other thousands or millions or billions of computers worldwide and that is what happens yeah so so that is the first that you, you need to understand the next then its governance yeah, the governance of the internet it says here is conducted by a decentralized and international multi-stakeholder network so in when you start you know, uh, connecting here, what did you do actually? Let's say now, let me ask you, you just bought a new computer. You are not yet connected to internet. This is like the first time, the first day you want to use a computer. Let's say you are like 15 years old or maybe 10 years old, you get a new computer. So what should you do to get into the internet? Then you have to connect, isn't it? You have to connect. How do you connect the internet? Uh, I will connect to my service provider. 
Okay, at home you have a service provider. Either you do it by cable, by fixed line, or by wireless router. But still, you have to connect with a service provider. Okay, that service provider can be whatever name and brand you you have it here in Malaysia. But that would be the first window for you, in order to get into the internet. Without these people, you cannot get into the internet. Ah, uh, what about getting uh, from uh, Wi-Fi outside? Of course, all those Wi-Fi and public uh, access, they also subscribe to a service provider, meaning there must be this window provided by somebody, and this somebody is this business entity called Internet Service Provider because the country does not handle it. You know, the government does not handle service provider. They allow private uh, sectors. Yeah, to be a service provider. So you see, the first time you connect, you already involve the first line, the first line of people, which is a service provider. Then what next? Is the service provider capable of giving you the access to the internet on their own? No. The answer is no. Why? Because they are only service provider. They only provide the service. So if you want to trace further, this service provider also get connection from the server from uh, some uh, we call it national exchange uh, point yeah something like that it mean which means uh, in every country there will be national exchange point yeah which will, which is either um, uh, governed by uh, a network of private businesses or together with the government you know different countries will have different arrangements so you see your, your first liner they also connect to another person in order to get them to connect to the other the other uh, you know network so with this with these layers yeah of, of of connection you get things decentralized actually yeah there is no one person or one entity to decide yeah on how you get connected and so on that is only uh, in terms of connection what about in terms of content it is also ubiquitous content comes from else from many places yeah you want to open the internet what do you do first you need to get what a browser isn't it who provides the browser until unless you create your own browser then you have to depend on other people's internet browser be it google be it microsoft or be it anybody else then you already involve another person in terms of getting the access yeah but google themselves of course they are providing the browser but they may not provide contents that you want okay of course google create a lot of other contents like you want to go to youtube it is owned by google also but you want to go to other places which are not owned by google then you are referring to other companies who provide the content let's say you want to read new story you want to open malaysia kini you want to open astro awani every day you want to read anything something about covid 19 so you open these new stories of course these are not provided by google these are provided by other what we call as content providers so you realize actually the fact that you are connecting yourself to the internet it involves lots of you know uh entities including governments uh, private sectors and so on and also uh in international organizations why is that uh <clears throat> the fact that we have this domain name domain name is uh, a system which is uh it is an international system yeah let's say you want to i i'm using a dot com yeah wordpress wordpress.com uh sonizuluhuda.com so this dot com is actually managed by a company in the united states therefore in order to have my internet running and using my own blog i have to involve this person in the united states and using their domain name yeah but i also must use the uh, service provider provided by my be it uh dg any other telecom communications company so that is why it is called it is a decentralized uh, in uh, uh, architecture yeah in uh, involving 
International Multi Stakeholder Network, be it the service provider, the content provider, the domain name uh, registrar, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the moment you see how internet is developed, actually, a lot of things are being involved. Yeah. So it is also mentioned these uh, multi stakeholders may come from civil society, then the private sector, you know, here, governments, yeah? uh, and then academic and research communities, national and international organizations. You will see more after this, some details. And then they work cooperatively from their respective roles yeah, to create shared policies and standards that maintain the internet's global interoperability for the public good meaning wherever i am wherever you are you are we are referring to the same open platform yeah that makes what internet is today all right so this is taken from ICANN website ICANN is another important player I can stands for Internet <coughs> Corporation for assigned names and numbers. So they are the one who, has, who is responsible for the global administration of domain names. Yeah, this www.anything.com is under their purview. Yeah, of course, it is not even centralized itself because different countries have their own administrators of the domain name. For example, .my is administered in Malaysia by Malaysians. The administrator of .id is in Indonesia. .in is in India. .bd is for? .bd is for Brunei. .bn for Bangladesh, isn't it? Or oh, I am there um, mix up. <laughs> so, of uh, BD is for Bangladesh. Okay, thank you. BD for Bangladesh, BN is for Brunei, BR for Brazil. Yeah. So this is an inter in this is itself an international standard, which has to be agreed. Otherwise, we do not have the same platform. Bangladesh wants to use BD. Brunei Darussalam also wants to use BD. Indonesia wants to use ID. India also wants to use ID, for example. Or both wants to use IN, dot IN. Then there is no conformity. In other words, if you don't <coughs> cooperate, at the end, <coughs> we will not have a one internet. Yeah, That's why Malaysia got MY. And Maldives got dot M something. <laughs> Yeah, there is a list of all this, uh, you know, name. Okay, you see that it actually, the, the, this is how, uh, what I can partly has done, yeah? All right, further on. Internet governance developed. Yeah, the issue of internet governance was greatly developed with the establishment of the following. So I'm showing you, among others, some initiatives, yeah? As well as entities that had, somehow influenced yeah, the, 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 the issue of internet governance. Number one is ICANN, the one I just mentioned, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, under the US predominant influence. Of course, it started in the US. Why? Because in the beginning, this administration of the basic, uh, for the central administration of the domain name started in the US and they were established by the funding of the government of the US. That's why in the beginning, U.S. government's influence is very, very heavy in the internet, even though now getting decreasing, decreasing because I can get more democratic when more people wants to have some, you know, equal shares and and and, and fair shares of of power. Uh, the governments of United States keep, uh, you know, reducing their influence well, bit by bit. So you may want to check I can website I can .org. This pro this organization deals mainly with the management, regulation, and administration of domain name system and related matters. Yeah, in the current World Wide Web uh, architecture, we all need domain name system. Why? Because without domain name system, we will have to use the complicated numbering of IP address. Ah. 
So for example, my blog is sonizulhuda.com. If there is no such system, maybe I have to mention my blog as 15.550.67.81. Because that's troublesome. That's tiring for me to remember those numbers and keep telling you, go to my blog, it's 15. Dot blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So so people have created this domain name. Yeah, it's a naming, naming system, naming of the domain in the internet. Yeah, with this kind of uh, naming, you know, with the yeah, uh, country code like dot id dot uh, org uh, dot uh, my or with the uh, they call it the higher code or the central uh, uh, code which is like dot com yeah dot org dot info dot net and so on. It keeps on growing actually. Yeah. Second. World Summit on the Information Society, WSIS. This is uh, backed and, and endorsed by United Nations, uh, 2003 and 2005. Endorsed by the UN General Assembly, brought the internet governance to the diplomatic domains and involving governments. You see, after the WSIS, then you see the active involvements of governments into the uh, internet domain, internet governance. Because before this, the government was having lack of lack of uh, legitimacy you know they are not having a basis uh, or le uh, legal or legitimacy basis to go, uh, to uh, uh, join in uh, the, the, the internet governance uh, discourse or regulations so with this wsis uh, the government is being recognized as as, as uh, having uh, some you know role in in uh and this is backed up by the united nations so of course the biggest uh multinational uh organizations yeah so with this wsis governments are actively you know uh uh proposing you know putting some you know standards and so on and so forth and like every year i think they have this igf yeah igf is internet governance forum okay it goes down to the next slide next uh, point here we have IGF every year, uh, which uh, involves a lot of parties, including governments and civil society. The civil society has their own forum called uh, GIGANET, yeah? uh, Global Internet Governance Academic Network, GIGANET. And I'm part of it. I have been serving as their program committee members uh, for uh, some few years, three or four years, I forgot, somewhere uh in, back in 2005 to, up to 2010 yeah, i was quite active in giganet so we have a conference every year and this is where the academics and researchers yeah contribute for the giganet which is part of the igf igf where many people including government also and and as well as the technicians technical people also come in a forum to actually discuss about this and then, uh, last but not least, is the ITU. ITU as uh, uh, one uh, organization, official organization under the UN, uh, is also uh, involved in uh, creating some, uh, you know, standards, rules, codes, and so on for the purpose of internet governance. So, as you see, each of these they work on their own, but somehow having some, you know, uh, communications between them between ICANN, IGF, WSIS, and ITU, you know, because they are dealing with one shared platform called the internet. You know, they don't want if any, you know, of this institution creates problem to the others. And so, of course, it happened in the past, but uh, they try to minimize it. Okay, talking about ICANN, I want to share with you what happened. ICANN, as one of the organizations involved in the internet governance are uh, always opening up this uh, program called ICANN Fellowship Program, okay? And uh, the reason why I put it here, because I want to encourage you, each of you, to look into this program and apply. They have two or two to three times, yeah, uh, application or program every year. So every year they will, they will open up to three times, three different public forum so every time it will be one week one week program so every year they will have three of course before this COVID-19 it was very normal you 
you're going to travel if they chose you and they're going to sponsor everything your travel and some stipend yeah so uh, go and look at this and it is good uh, it is actually opens up all the participation from other country all countries from all countries yeah every time they will have a very good uh, meeting you will be uh, taught about how the internet is uh, uh, how about the internet is what the, uh, the new issues the contentious issues and so on you will meet uh, great people in the internet development from all countries yeah uh, I have a chance, I have the advantage of joining and getting my applications through yeah, uh, twice, okay? They actually allow even up to three times, yeah? I got this twice, one in 2011 in Singapore, the other one was in China, in Beijing. So they actually uh, rotate, yeah? Uh, you uh, can uh, apply as academics or anyone from university, including students, you, know, you may apply as part of the civil society organization or you may apply as part of the government or you may apply as part of the business people yeah and as long as you are having this common um interest to the internet and how internet governance is being uh, uh developed yeah please have a look into this uh, website just uh, key in uh, the, the entry i mean uh, this keyword i can fellowship program okay uh, the, in the COVID time, of course, they had, I think recently I heard they have uh, virtual uh, meetings, yeah. But maybe if time gets back, it will be good. So this was me. Can you uh, point out where I am? <laughs> okay. This was like nine years ago, yeah. Uh, in 2011 in Singapore, okay. Yeah, I, I, this is me, uh, in case you still try to find out. So all my fellow uh, registrars, uh, applicants, uh, participants come from all parts of the world, yeah? Uh, India, this is India, I remember, and then uh, Europe, uh, this is Amer Latin America, uh, Bangladesh, you know, uh, many others, yeah? They accept between... 30 to 40 people every time, yeah? So this was in Singapore, and the next, this is in uh, Beijing, yeah? Uh, either this is Beijing or, yes, this was Beijing. Uh, right, so we have these two, of course, uh, you will meet variety of people. Uh. Oh, I'm, I think this is also Singapore. I think I, I have uh, I put a wrong one. I want to show you the one in Beijing. Of course, you meet different people with different background cultures. That is really how you you learn, you know, to to adapt and to communicate. And while getting, you know, uh, knowledge and experience uh, in so many ways. Okay, back to internet governance. This one, this poster I got from ICANN website also, showing you. <clears throat> this is lots of layers of the internet showing the multi multi stakeholders the title here is who runs the internet no one person company organization or government runs the internet so internet is a shared is a shared space by multi stakeholders and you see the multi stakeholders are here in the left column and the right column yeah well uh no i cannot read all here but i can is there ietf is those uh responsible with the technological infrastructure igf is the civil society uh, internet governance forum you see here government is down here left uh left and uh bottom here government and intergovernmental organizations because we understand that each government has the control and authority over the internet of their own country uh, then we we must include every government is really a a, a good part of the uh, multi-stakeholders uh, of the internet then you have all these uh, institutes internet society is also a, a, a non-governmental uh, society or civil society then you see here rir regional internet registries these are the registries which open up the access. Remember, I mentioned to you, you subscribe to DG or you subscribe to Maxis. And then these Maxis people, they have to refer to their regional internet registries in order to get connection. 
uh, these people in every region we have different regions like asia europe and latin america and then north america and then uh, one in africa so they have different regions and therefore different registries you see each of these people are very influential and 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 contributing into uh, having for us having the internet or having the access to the internet so have a look at how these multi stakeholders work and what each what role each can play for example <clears throat> you see the, the 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 thing like in blue here blue in blue uh, boxes actually it shows you or it indicates what kind of role they are doing you see the legend is here the information yeah one is advice some people are just doing advisory then others community engagement then education then operation then policy then research then standards and then services standards is like you know the standard of the internet protocol standard of language of the website and then here uh, services including the content service uh, access service you know network service so each of these yeah and some will be like uh, advisory operational and so on and so forth so this slide actually shows you how um, uh, the multi-stakeholderism actually happens in the internet but then if you remember uh, you may want to check on google yeah uh, some some leaders of some countries have uh, mentioned that we don't want to we don't want to be at the same internet with with our political um, you know uh, enemies because they they argue that the internet has been used for you know um uh domination of a certain power well politically it may be true but not not perhaps uh actually um is yeah for example uh one of the leader from iran was quoted saying that we want to create our own internet the iranian internet you can check on google he was famously quoted as saying this is ahmad uh, ahmadinejad of course he was uh, a vocal uh, leader at that time and he was saying he was uh, not happy with how the internet has been dominated by you know some countries some political powers so he was saying that uh, we want to have uh, our own version of internet um the one that we we wish i mean the, with the content that we wish uh, to have and without the content and we don't with that uh, that we don't wish to have so <clears throat> this kind of statement of course is more political rather than anything because the internet as we have now is already so massive so ubiquitous if you want to have really a internet of your own the choice is you may want to disconnect yourself from the whole internet and create your own computer network which is a, a, a local computer network and that is not the same with the internet that we are currently enjoying so your choice is either you join this this uh, internet as it is or you want to create your own which is i don't know uh, might might not be uh, of, uh, of of immediate reality yeah so that is uh, the, the the situation is of course if you want to talk about it from political perspective that would be different yeah so the next slide also talks about the logical layers of digital governance where basically it shows you so many people are involved with different uh, different uh, roles so for example our the internet that we currently use of course we use the i already told you we use the access from a and then we uh, and then i create the content which is provided by b and then i also use the internet access uh, internet uh, ip address which is maintained by c then i'm also using a domain name which is maintained by d and then i'm also the computer is also using the software and the protocols you know the language which is developed by e and regulated by f <laughs> so you realize when you talk about internet governance it is about how each of these people are putting you know efforts in order to shape the internet as how we we have today <clears throat> of course not everyone is happy yeah i must say not everyone is happy with the way internet is today and one of the things that i already show you even the 
developer Sir Tim Berners Lee is not happy himself. How the internet is been so and so and so. Then Jonathan Zitran also uh, came up with his complaint. And then some people uh, say the internet is already full of, you know, trashes, full of rubbish. He is not happy with the content, with the offensive contents in the internet. Yeah. So there are many, many reasons why people are not happy. But of course, these are, these are, you know, perspectives you know these are perspectives if you want to go back to square one having an internet is such a beautiful you know uh, thing we have in life and it is now really up to us how we want to see it and what kind of role we want to play yeah in order to get a better internet and eliminate the passive uh, the, the negative use of it and and we as a law and from legal fraternities law professors law students lawyers we want to put it in such a way that we can do from the legal perspectives, isn't it? That's that is the pers perspective I think we should have. Uh, just one minute. Uh, I want to get my my charger for my computer. Okay. Okay, few. <laughs> okay, is everyone good? Any any comment so far? So far, so good, Prof. Good, Prof. I'm telling you, I've been I've been doing the talking today, but you will do it next, inshallah. Inshallah. Sure, Prof. This is a tomato juice prepared by my wife, specially prepared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, right, let me now move further. Okay, uh, interesting <clears throat> slide here. We have been talking about shared principles, shared uh, rules. So what? Are the internet governance principles as had been developed by uh, international community and in this case is the European yeah the European <clears throat> international uh, European uh, uh, community which we can learn of course it's not a binding things but we can learn from this one human rights democracy and the rule of law okay two Sorry, for the first one, that means that <clears throat> all this, uh, whatever whatever way we want to shape the, the internet, we want the internet to have, to maintain and preserve these human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Because we believe that this is the shared principle that we currently have, <clears throat> even though people would interpret democracy differently or human rights differently, which is okay, you know, we have different sources of law and so on and so forth. But at least we can agree on these basic principles. Second, <clears throat> multi-stakeholder governance, which, we, which means that it is not run by one person. There are several individuals, parties, organizations, including governmental and non-governmental, who are involved in the governance of the internet. Number three, responsibilities of the states. Yes, states are still responsible. As we said earlier, states are given mandate and, res and responsibility and power yeah, to protect their citizens and to, put, uh, to create a welfare, economics, economic welfare, social welfare for their citizens. So as in order to do that, they should have some, some role to play and uh, in order to preserve the benefit of the internet for their citizens. Therefore, responsibility of states is, is very crucial. 
empowerment of internet users this is important because <clears throat> internet is not like a state media where there's one one way you know one way communications and more likely to be one way benefit <laughs> yeah but internet is is a very democratic open you know space of communications and where the users would have some space to also define what to do and what not to do with the internet and then next is universality of the internet we are talking about a globalization the internet needs to be a globalized uh, sh a shared uh, space then integrity of the internet internet needs to keep its integrity not to allow inter internet to be a, a place of criminals the place of uh, misbehavior or becomes a safe haven yeah for for criminal uh, purposes so this is what we what we don't want the internet to be that's why we are talking about the integrity of the internet and how to put the integrity then among others we we agree on 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 certain uh, standards rules on laws and so on and then co cooperation between people and so on decentralized management as we already have seen yeah different people are involved in access in co providing content in creating or maintaining the domain names and in creating the standard and the protocols different people yeah and they actually work together even though they work among them uh, on their own but they all work in harmony yeah architectural principles you are talking about <clears throat> what kind of principles to be adopted by people who create the architectures yeah for example the open platform you know the 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 the, the uh, necessity to 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 up to to adopt the recent standards yeah perhaps any uh, uh internationally agreed yeah um uh, codes such as what such as the the name of the domain ids for as the domain code the dot my dot id dot everything this has to be uh agreed yeah and then the open network yeah it should not be a closed network so jonathan zitran in his book also criticized the social media you know like facebook for example or any other social media because it like create it is as if they create a wall inside the internet isn't it because the things that you share on facebook for example can only be enjoyed by people who have access to facebook it is not like you are creating a, a blog a website like what i do that's why i create a blog in order to to post my 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 uh, materials my my uh, you know thoughts rather than okay i also of course have my own Facebook, but it is for more limited purposes because I know what I read on Facebook is not as widely uh, read or accessible as my blog. So you see, it is the difference between the open network and the closed network. Yeah. And then last but not least is cultural and linguistic diversity. That's why now they create, uh, you know, uh, uh, codes, HTML codes that can uh, read and can transfer, uh, communicate every type of transcript, isn't it? Not only you can type Latin, you can type Arabic, and then it can be exchanged. And now even domain name also comes in Arabic and any other languages as well. Yeah. So this is among the internet governance principles that are worthy of uh, considerations and looking at. Whenever, so whatever eff efforts you want to do in your role and capacity, be you as an individual, as a technicians, as a business providers, as government, you better make sure those initiatives are in line with these principles. Yeah. Of course, again, this is not a binding rule by which if you infringe, 
then you get sanctions it is not like a law yeah but then it becomes a shared of values okay okay when we talk about internet governance sometimes we have uh, issues uh, conflict of interest between the technical and ethical side you know for example in this case I can uh, people uh, been discussing about legitimizing or establishing a new domain name called dot xxx uh, we used to have of course in the beginning dot com dot org dot gov and now people want to have dot xxx in order to accommodate pawns and adult materials uh of course this was between the two things technically it is possible and in fact it is perhaps good to localize this kind this kind of contents in its own place rather than being spread in other dot com or other anything else that was one of the consideration but of course ethically some people are not easy with that because it is as if you legitimize these porn materials or obscene materials in some countries it is a big no-no of course well in some others it is considered as part of the uh, freedom of expression but even in those liberal countries they still have some limitation for example if it involves uh, minors or it involves gross uh, acts of course they will they will also uh, limit it so we have these situations where sometimes the there is a conflict between the the technical need and the ethical reasons yeah governments being re reluctant yeah? uh and and but 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 then some people still argue still uh, want to do so this happened when dot was proposed but in 2011 but now actually it is already there yeah then also sometimes we see the conflict between restriction and freedom for example the uh, copyright issue of course the law uh, looks at restricting the the sharing of the copyrighted materials but then the way internet is developed it's making it easier to uh, share much to share materials even though they are protected so we have this conflict in this situation it's not easy to actually govern the internet um uh having this kind of uh, challenges to what extent the internet can allow yes yeah, such a such a, a restriction of course if you are to use the law as it is then it is not allowed i mean uh, it is technically an infringement you want to share for example anything on uh on uh, your mobile on your blog or on social media something which is copyrighted then certainly it is not uh, legal uh, but then uh, this is a challenge taken by professor lawrence lessig yeah l e s s i g uh, i have his book also listed in in a in a website how he came up with this idea of having a new regime of copyright whereby the copyrighted work can be published as long as you know some licensing rule is followed for example you can publish it as long as you don't commercialize it for example so so lawrence Lacy came up with this idea of cc instead of c1c he came up with the cc 2c yeah creative commons yeah, you can check later on we'll discuss about this under copyright issue but what i want to show you is there had been all this yeah uh while we want to uh uphold these governance principles you know, about legality and so on but yet there had been uh, some conflict of interest yeah as we see here and commercial versus ethical sometimes what is good for commercial purpose is not good ethically for example uh, uh -huh. yeah network neutrality uh, someone wants is asking uh -huh. is, that, is someone asking uh no okay yeah yes somebody wants to speak no way eh? okay you you look at this last point here social media versus advertisement do you know that 
social media like like what we have been using like facebook like other things of course has been made as a very powerful tool of advertisements yeah so whatever we we supply may strike back to us you know uh, because we supply too much and they are able to profile us based on what we supply on social media and therefore it becomes a tools of advertisement yeah so this is also a conflict uh, between commercial as well as ethical you know of course for the uh, for commercial purpose it is good to make use of the data facebook has for the advertisement purpose uh, facebook will be you know for example offering it uh, for, to third parties and so on and so forth this thing happens until unless you clearly say that you don't want to share the data and so on uh, because i mean we, i'm not i'm not referring to any specific incidents but there is always this high chance and in fact we have seen some cases where people are arguing that there had been a misuse of personal information from the social media platforms okay and then also there is another interesting conflict between <clears throat> multi-stakeholderism and governmentalism there had been efforts by some countries yeah, like some few lah, yeah they want to put a control over the internet for example i put here in china china says the igf yeah the internet governance forum should be anchored in the un system therefore to give room for government to have more says but the united states says no igf should remain independent from government's influence you see, they had actually uh, efforts there by some countries to put more control over the international forum. <clears throat> so, I like ITU is also another another uh, intergovernmental uh, <clears throat> organizations. Uh, if the ITU is given more power, meaning there will be extension of governments, yeah, government extension into the internet. <clears throat> uh, so this is the this is I think the competing uh, the competing uh, interest between uh, the internet being um, being uh, governed by multi stakeholders, but at the same time there is or there are some governments who want to have more control over it. So this is also a very dynamic situation that even we 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 see <coughs> uh, that may influence the internet governance uh, today or in the near future. Yeah. Then also issue of privacy and surveillance. Yeah, what like happened in uh, Edward Snowden? Edward Snowden was uh, an American who flew, flew, uh, fled, fled uh, to Soviet Union. Yeah, because he was uh, he was uh, uh, wanted. Yeah, by the FBI for uh, um, uh, for. Uh, disclosing yeah secrets disclosing the national secrets uh, which relates to the surveillance yeah so because of this we we now know that uh the united states actually had put up a lot of surveillance yeah, programs trying to monitor to know yeah, the internet users right to monitor the, the the activity of internet users not only american even uh, global internet users so you must be uh, mindful about that this is at least what was revealed from the <coughs> revelation by uh, edward snowden please uh, go through and, and uh, check on his name to know what happens uh, uh, involving him yeah so <clears throat> we have the issue here between surveillance and privacy it's always conflicting you know the government wants to do surveillance for many reasons maybe for the security reason anti-terrorism reason you know for public good for public order but at the same time some people and many people are not easy about it they don't want to be surveilled they don't want to be subject to surveillance so so there is always this issue between when to give privacy more or when to allow such surveillance now we have the same situations with this covid 19 right with this covid 19 <clears throat> government wants to know the our movement isn't it wherever you go you have to uh, either you log uh, your name or you you upper you scan with your mobile phone in order to report your whereabouts yeah using uh, some applications like my sejahtera or everything else so what happens of course your, your data will be sent to the operator in this case of the government telling you your whereabouts where were you at what time yeah uh, and then uh, 
what was your uh, you know uh, yeah some data which was required yeah so to some people this is another form of surveillance but of course in such situation we may need it for you know uh, stopping this uh, pandemic yeah so in such situations maybe there is a clear reasons why surveillance will be needed but to some extent of course it also uh, raises caution and and and, and uh, risk yeah that this data may also be open to abuse yeah or misuse or maybe negligence yeah by those people who who uh, own the data you know things can happen but we we pray that nothing wrong will happen lah but let's say if anything you know intrusion or hacking happens in those data then everything will be taken away so that is among the the, the conflicting situations yeah all right we we'll come to the end of this uh, matter i just, i'm just showing you some references here the book that we are currently showing you and giving you in the link internet governance by jovan kurbalisha and there is another one which i cannot give you the 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 copy yet uh, internet governance issues actors and divides and internet content creation by our own lecturer yeah uh, dr mayudin yeah of course he wrote this as his phd and then now already printed as a book you can get it from iom press the internet content regulation is good in the, for the for explaining this uh, issue okay right thank you so before i go to uh, this uh, assessment issue is there any question or any comments based on what i discussed Please. Everything's good? Are you good? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes bro. I hope you are. Yeah. We've been here for some time, yeah? This is the challenge of a uh, master's class. Uh, Okay, before I move for the assignment uh, page, I just want to highlight to you again what we have covered today, okay? By this lecture, you should be able to answer all these questions, okay? Look at this, items for discussion. What is internet? What is the internet and how does it evolve? Who were involved in the beginning of the internet deployment? How is the internet built and structured? What is the future of the internet, according to Prof. Zitran? Why certain Berners Lee was concerned? I remember about this. What is meant by the internet governance? Who governs the internet? What is meant by a multi stakeholder governance of the internet? yeah and who are the actors of the internet governance at least you can you can highlight some you know like the government the international uh, community like ICANN, itu the igf wsis the un and also some uh, uh technical you know sites and and as well as the access providers <clears throat> so these are people who are all involved as the actors of the internet governance actually there is one last uh, point uh, among the conflicting interests yeah of the internet governance and also the principle of internet governance yeah it is not here but you should by now uh, be able to get uh, that that uh, questions all right now comes my last uh, thing uh, for you to have for next week you will be doing the talking, yeah, inshallah. Look at this. Now, <clears throat> we have 13 people actually, not 14, yeah. So we will take out GPS, number 10, we will take out GPS. So who wants to take each of this? Who wants to take what? Yes, Prof. I, I want to take that way. <laughs> okay let us do very uh adult manner yeah so if it is taken by anyone first first time so you will do away okay web 2.0 sapa not very hard one <laughs> who mentioned about dark web 
Yes, ma'am. Farah, Farah, Farah. Oh, Farah. Okay, Farah, you got it. You got what you want. Okay, who else? I want to take topic number three. Topic. Who is this? Is My name it? is Kisra. Yeah, Kisra. It's Oh, Kisra, okay. Yeah. Kisra Computer Malware, All right? Yeah. Uh, prove me uh, cloud computing. Cloud computing, your name? Abdul Qadir. Uh, Abdul Qadir. <coughs> uh, okay. Automatic encryption. What is that? Who's that? Setting Allah. Allah, okay. What are you taking? Uh, encryption, setting. Okay, good. Quite relevant to your thesis as well. Prof, I would like to take number five, big data analysis. Big data. Big data. You are? Siapa tadi? You are? Janda, Janda. Janda, Janda. Janda, oh, Janda. Okay, Janda. Okay. Uh, sir. Sir, can I take number six? Uh, sir. Who is that, number six? Uh, can I take number six? Uh, your name? Yati, yeah. Priyati. Priyati. Thank you, sir. Sir, domain name number one. Dari apa Hakim? Number one. Hakim number one. Yeah. Sundar, you want to say something? What? Yeah, domain name. Yeah. See? Domain name. Yeah. Sundar, right? Yeah. Sir, Surani. Oh, we can talk about it. Don't worry. Everything here is fun. What is that? Surani Blockchain. number 12. Surani, Surani number 12. Number 12. Surani smart, smart contract. GPS. GPS. Number 8. Doctor. Number 8. Siapa ni? What's Irfan. your name? Ah, Irfan. Okay. Amirul number 14. Huh? Amirul. <laughs> Who hasn't got yet? Oh. Who doesn't have yet? Yes, Prof. Me, Prof. How many? Big data. Sapa, what's your name? Uh, we have now. Okay. Uh, okay, GPS not yet taken. And then uh, Internet of Things. GPS, boleh lah, GPS. Doctor, I would like to ask what is actually Internet of Things? Well, uh, the whole the whole internet or no? This is interesting. It is very interesting. It's for you to read. It is a concept. It is a new concept. How internet are being uh, used in any in any type of device? Okay, I would like to take no? it. Okay, you are Imran. Okay, Imran. <laughs> now you will be amazed with it. Now you. Your mobile, your car, your house are interconnected, and then your rest, uh, this watch. Uh, oh, the yeah. fact that they are all embedded with the internet. This is what we call as Internet of Things. Yeah, interconnection of things. Okay, prof. Thank you. Well, uh, who hasn't got? We have Me, one. Prof. You are GPS. Ah, the last, the last. Oh, ni apa pasal GPS? Adlan. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Now we uh, now I realize we have fourteen. Yeah. Okay. What do you do with this? <clears throat> Listen. What do you do with this? Um. I I must tell you. Okay. Don't worry. This is what we call as technology briefing. This is not uh. This is not a proper essay. Even yeah. This is not real. Not even a proper essay. This is not like a research work. But we want to understand some, you know, technical uh, concept behind this. Yeah, it is not as if you require to read so many books or theories. It is not as if you have to do literature review. No. All what you need to do is you try to understand what, in what context this concept is used. And then maybe you go back to some uh, dictionary or technical dictionary or maybe uh, some uh, encyclopedia even online can tell you what each of this is. And of course, you have to uh, explain based on that. Yeah, uh, not 
historical, not so much historical, but but more descriptive what it is actually. You describe what it is. Yeah. So let's see what to do now. Here, the point. Present the topic from the technical perspective and less legal. So you are not going to talk about the legality, about the law, about any rules, the international convention, nothing like that. Yeah. Not so much about uh, theories in law, no. It is more in the technical. So, for example, you ask about Internet of Things. What is it? Now you never heard, but the moment you read and you read more stories, and then you realize this is a concept of how the Internet is being, you know, uh, embedded into so many things. But then it is not enough to only highlight like that. So what? Yeah, you see then the second point. Explain the definition, the meaning, types, and nature of your topic. Yeah, yeah. This is like a very basic understanding of the, of the term. And then you see the last, the third one. Give examples or illustrations in the real world. So maybe you want to highlight either from news stories or from you know, any uh, incidents or any statement by some people. When, for example, artificial intelligence, okay, people have been talking about this. So, Suryati, you give us example. Where is this artificial intelligence example? Just give example. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, you show. So people get, you know, oh, clear understanding. Oh, this is an example. Yeah. Then, this is also important. Why is it important for cyber law students? This is what you have to think a little bit. Uh -huh. What kind of relevance? Why do I need to understand about this? Why why would it be important for me to understand this? Maybe not now, maybe later let, let on, or maybe in future when I practice law, or maybe when I do the research, or maybe when, when I become a legal practitioner. Yeah. Why? I mean the answer can be anything as long as you justify. Why is it going to be interesting from the legal perspective as a legal person? I give you an example. Yeah? Internet of things. Oh, um, let me just put artificial intelligence. It's going to be important because why? I give an example. Oh, in the future, yeah, we will have to depend on artificial intelligence in sentencing issue, for example. This is already happening, isn't it? Yeah? When we are uh, by the court, when they want to deliver sentencing, they will use artificial intelligence. How is that? Uh, so you can like give some, uh, you don't have to, you know, when you discuss that, you don't have to say, okay, the law says this, this, is and no, 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 this is not for it. This is what we call as technology briefing. Yeah, we want to know. For example, encryption, Allah chose this because maybe he thinks that it will be very important, you know, concept in order to, to, to talk about evidence, for example, why? Yeah, and then you have to link it. Mostly, I think your your uh, presentation will be around fifteen minutes. I give you like five injury, five minutes of injury time, twenty minutes. But fifteen minutes is good enough. We don't want to hear more than that, actually. Yeah, you may want to use slide, and your slide will not be so many. It will be about five slides at most. You want to put the definition. You want to show the illustration or example, and then you want to argue why is it important for the cyber law people. So please, this is not uh, that that big, yeah. But we just want a precise. We we want some precise output from this, okay? And it will be great if at the end you can list three academic journal writings that you might find helpful. Remember, academic journal writings, not article from new straight times card the star no maybe which means maybe you just want to browse you don't have to explain what each of this article talks about you know you just want to browse ah then you realize this article talks about this more or less not everything but some part of it it is fine yeah just highlight three academic journal writings you know from newspaper from papers uh, any journal local or international journals which talks about this. It's quite easy. You go to uh, Google Scholar or you go to Scopus website and uh, put the right keyword, then you will get it. Even in the Lexis also, you can put the right keyword and then you will get it.
insyaAllah. Of course, academic journal writing from the legal perspective, yeah, not from technical perspective alone. And it means this uh, question is, is, is related to the point above that. Yeah, why is it important for cyber law students? Maybe you can get help from this academic journal writing. So three is is okay. It's easy. I mean, you don't have to do a review of what is inside the article. Okay. So I will put this seminar there next week. Why? Because these are all about basic things that we may need to know to understand further how things work. For example, later on we talk about electronic contract. Uh, then there is an issue of blockchain as part of the payment for example or they want to use a uh, smart contract uh, so we want to know that we can relate so better we have it uh, early and i believe this is in a matter of one week inshallah it is uh, manageable yeah seminar day is next week so we try to accommodate everyone in one day yeah that's what we try so we will we will see if not then we have to consider extension to other day yeah so after this basically you have those few things then you can just copy them into one page of word document yeah it is not even a proper essay actually just one page you know summary of what you what you have yeah but it is better in in a proper text lah, rather than point 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 no i don't want that uh better write it it's like an essay but not a full essay a, pro, a short essay a one one page where you put everything including the uh uh the the, the references of these three academic journal writings uh, that one i give you until the weekend okay after wednesday you have thursday friday saturday sunday so you send me inshallah on monday second november yeah by the day lah, uh, by the day on Sunday, on Monday. Okay, so is that clear? Doctor, uh, what, uh, yes. what does it mean by the nature of the topic? Man, basically, it's about the not topic. The nature of, uh, what's the whatever. nature of, uh, huh? Whatever. Yeah, 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 whatever you think is, is necessary to inform me. Yeah? So basically, it is an open, it is an open, um, a open area, open, open, uh, you know, area for you to, 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 to explore. Okay. Anything else? Uh, and that means that we we don't have to prepare the slides, right? We have to prepare just the word document in one page. Actually, I was, I was saying when you uh, explain, it is much easier if you have a slide, actually. Oh, okay. And, and your slide, of course, slide can be just point, 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 or just example from, from news. It is up to you, whatever you want to put. But uh, make it easy to follow. Like, don't put so much into, into one slide. So it is, you, you will need it for your, for your uh, uh, presentation in five, 15 minutes. Maybe require like five, five slides, I believe, not more than that yeah so what i want you to submit is not the slide but rather the the uh one page uh, document so easily you can put all those words in uh, the, from the slides put it in one page document why one page yeah i just want precise things not anything else not so much about the history behind it no uh how blockchain came up how internet uh, uh computer malware came up no, we don't want so much historical, but more onto the the question of what it is. Yeah, what it is. Okay. Any other question? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Shall we call it now? The end of the lecture. So, uh, uh, unless you are having problem with this uh, term, but I believe whenever you make reference, you will get it easily. Yeah, web 2.0, dark web, computer malware. Malware stands for malicious software. Yeah, you will get it when you read it. Internet of Things, big data analytics, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, blockchain, CII. CII, nobody is taking, yeah? Uh, what about Fadlan? Why don't you take CII rather than GPS? Fadlan. Fadlan, are you there? Hey, hey. Yeah, bro. 
CIA. I will. I recommend you take the CIA, not the GPS. Number nine. Critical okay? information infrastructure. Yes. Okay, I choose that. Yes, take the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay, it is bro. about the internet infrastructure, information infrastructure in a country. What what amounts to CII? Yeah? Domain name system or DNS, smart contract, encryption, uh, and then ISP or internet service providers. Great. Thank you for your attention and participation. Uh, I hope we meet again. Uh, so so this one is changed here for the link for the for the CII, yeah? Never mind, I will change it later. So that will be okay, all, bro. I think. Uh, uh, let us reset. Uh, 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 and and uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. Thank you for your participation. And anything you uh, WhatsApp me, lah, yeah? If there's anything, any question, okay? Of Farah, you have good time with your cat, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so that will be all. Is there anything else before we leave? Not for now, yeah? Enough. Thank you. Enough, bro. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, stay well. We'll see you thank again you, next uh, lecture. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much, bro. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay. Bye, take care. Thank you so much, Prof. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Prof.